This is cool. I hope everybody's having a calm and normal harvest season. Um, nothing too out of the ordinary, I trust. Uh, it's kind of nippy, yeah? I, I like fall, I think, because in summer, you're outside for 10 minutes, and then it's like, oh, organic deodorant doesn't work. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Better switch back to cancer flavor. For quarantine, I was uh, with I w for three months. I was in the wilds of suburban Pennsylvania with my parents, uh, with whom I was extremely busy socially and emotionally regressing. And um, my dad's black. My mom is half black, half Japanese, which appears on the new census as Ethiopian. And um, I was born and raised mostly in. Tokyo, people ask me often, like, oh, do you know a lot about anime? But I was in Japan, not the Midwest suburbs, so not as much. <laughs> I am really happy to be back in New York. Uh, I was like, you know, it's so nice. I was walking around, uh, which Cuomo said we could do, and... <laughs> I caught the eyes of this dog as it peed in the street, and I was just like, wow. <laughs> I, I guess we're both mammals. <laughs> but who in this exchange holds more power? You know, because dogs don't feel any shame to relieve themselves in public. <laughs> yeah, but as humans, we cannot relieve ourselves in public without getting shamed, which is the same thought process I had when I saw a black dude wearing a Kid Rock t-shirt. <laughs> I was like, oh, I do that in private. Um, I like to collect old records, but I'm really scatterbrained, and so I have a habit where I will throw vinyls into the wrong sleeves and not give a shit, and I had a, a guy over, and I wanted to put on something that was slow and sensual, uh, but actually, it was Barbados Steel Drum Orchestra, <laughs> which is hyper-fast, tropical jamming, and first of all, I really love Calypso. You know, my dad raised me on Harry Belafonte, but I wasn't trying to think about my dad. Um, <laughs> also, I thought it sounded really funny, so I was like, oh, let's keep it, which is a cool thing to say during sex. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's an abortion joke, and anyway, um, can you imagine trying to earnestly bone to this rhythm? Um, bong, 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 like, like the jackhammering necessary to meet that tempo is possible only for a hummingbird of a man, and he was at most a pigeon, so... If you're wondering, I did find Phil Collins. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, man. Yes, uh, uh, the top five underrated sex playlist uh, goes as follows. Uh, thank you for asking. Um, top five underrated sex playlist. Um, uh, Andy and Flute. Gregorian chants. Ominous, haunting organ. <laughs> number two, chaotic xylophone. <laughs> and number one, a Spotify playlist I found called Sad Christmas. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's sort of where I am emotionally. I...
have been having an interesting time. Um, I teach preschool by day. Uh, I know I seem so calm and nurturing, and <laughs> really, it is a thrill to be talking at people who can read. And um, like, uh, I don't know, everything shut down obviously in the middle of March, and at that time, we got tadpoles for my classroom, which I guess are maybe alive as frogs. Um, I don't know, <laughs> shout out to the Donahues for taking those guys in, you know? <laughs> and we were talking about their life cycle at circle time and a kid raised a quiet hand and asked very earnestly, uh, but the mama frogs, where are their boobs? <laughs> and I was like, oh, I don't need more salary. <laughs> I get paid in curiosity. <laughs> And I just kind of looked at my co-teacher who shrugged at me, so we turned to the kids and I was like, well, frogs are amphibians and we're all mammals. <laughs> and then without skipping a beat, another kid raised her hand and said verbatim, I'm not a mammal. And this is a really progressive Brooklyn school <laughs> where we don't impose any identities. So I'm just like... <laughs> oh, that is so brave to know about yourself. <laughs> Castle. Um, work those gills, queen. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know about you guys, but I love being a mammal. <laughs> We're so soft and warm. Um, we are the pussies of animal taxonomy. Uh, everything's been going fine because I've been writing some science fiction erotica and uh, the, yeah, things are good. So the two lovers in this tale are 17th century astronomist Isaac Newton and the concept of gravity. <laughs> so, Newton inhaled sharply <laughs> as his britches fell to the ground. Thanks to the eager force of gravity. <laughs> this exposed Newton's ready erection, which he brandished as he said to his lover, do you see how it defies you? <laughs> I don't know if you ask me, I just think like the planets had a good spin, you know? <laughs> and I read something about climate change that I didn't realize, so I guess the third biggest source of pollution to our planet is the clothing industry. So we are supposed to wear thrift clothes because it's less wasteful. But like pit stains, <laughs> talk about gross domestic product, you know? So <laughs> what do we do? A sustainable option is just to wear fewer clothes. <laughs> become, like, become a nudist, join a nudist community, but lacks pragmatism because being naked gets cold. <laughs> but also, the earth is getting hotter, so suck it up. <laughs> but don't suck it in, honey. Carbon negative, body positive. 